Hey guys, welcome back to Hawkeye Star Rail. You know the drill, we're back with another PvP content creator video. As always, I had nothing to do with this one, I just commentated it. Tamias does everything, the organization and all that stuff. So massive shout out to him, we just uploaded it to my channel. So I'll leave Tamias's channel and all the other creators involved in this one in the description. Go show them some love. Now for this one, we've done a bit more experimenting to try and make things a bit more fun. As always, leave any feedback you guys have in the comments and we are always paying attention but let's get into it. Hey everyone, Tamias here, and welcome to the fourth Tamias Cup, where we turn the PvE memory chaos into a PvP game mode, pitting content creators against each other, and with a pick and ban system in place to allow drafting. Now, today we have a very, very special occasion, and uh, we have in-house buffs and debuffs to balance the player accounts, as well as provide maximum entertainment. Now, to start things off, we have the first buff, and it's Stand Users. That's right, this allows Tectone and Gacha Smack to pick their favorite units Kafka and Blade and those units will be excluded from the ban and pick phase and they can use them in their runs and now uh, I won't explain too much of the ban and picks because it will be <laughs> very very self-explanatory once we see it in action so let's transition to the casters and take it away Grimroll and the Vulcan Okay, here we are for pickets and bans. This one's going to be interesting. We have Tectone and Smack already having their reserved characters with Kafka and Blade. We also do have some buffs and debuffs coming into it. So it is definitely going to be an interesting pick and ban phase. What do you think is going to happen, Grubro? Well, I think that it's anyone's game here, but we know that Smack and Tectone have reserved Kafka and Blade, who are two huge carries. So they're mostly going to be focusing on supports and sustains and messing with the other team, I reckon. So I, let's dive straight into it. And the first ban is a hook ban. Maybe trying to take away some of that fire options there for side one and some potential carry. Yeah, 100%. The monkey is a thing, and I have seen some good stuff with Hook during this phase of having the monkey as the first enemy. So maybe just trying to block that unit uh, from the enemy team. Yes, okay, the next ban from Team 2 here is going to be Silver Wolf, Glover, and Pokey trying to start denying some of those supports so Team 1 doesn't just take them all. You know, if Team 2 could have picked Silver Wolf up, they could have helped them a lot more because they do have the limited uh, roster due to the others already having their reserved picks. And that also does leave Bronya open, and Team 1 do immediately snatch Bronya away. Definitely one of the strongest supports and very synergistic with Blade, who they already have. Do you reckon this is going to be the the power combo that carries them? Well, 100%. The blade combo does make a ton of sense. We'll have to see what else they pick to see if they do have another option. But I mean, Bron uses a safe pick all the time. Yep. Okay. Team 2 coming straight back and taking two supports of their own. Tinyun and Pella are you the next best options. And they're setting themselves up for success as well here. But they're leaving themselves open to potentially getting counterpicked here with no carries. 100%. But the safe thing with the Tinyun and Pella is they're two very universal supports that can go with just about anything in the game so they're leaving themselves open if they do get a carry picked against them then they can take any other option these boys do have a ton of characters built so they can slot anything in with those supports yeah absolutely okay team one is going to be taking fush one here not looking to mess around with this memory of chaos wanting to lock in that immortality sustain pick there a very good option i think 100 percent easy sustain solo sustain get a bit of crit as well just an all-round fantastic character and you can know whoever's side she's going on that side is going to be pretty safe for the game absolutely here yeah. okay so we're going for our second round of bands here and team two is going hard on the supports once again they are taking away asta here so they're not interested in giving those supports over here looks like Vulcan. yeah asta's another good support so they've picked their two they're feeling pretty pretty safe at the moment and happy to go ahead and take that away from the other team and team one, okay, they're targeting more of these four-star carries here. Serval is getting the ban hammer, and that is going to round out our bans here, Vulcan. 100% interesting to see those four-stars getting slapped in there, but hey, trying to just take away as many options away from the boys as they can. Okay, and here we go. We've got our first debuff for the match, which is the Strip'em Naked. So this is meaning that Tectone 
and Smack get to choose two characters at the end of pick band, two characters from the enemy team and remove their chest pieces. So that is something that they will have to consider moving forward. But hey, I think any character without their chest piece is going to be a bit crippled. But in my mind, they're probably going to try and target their carries, get rid of that crit damage, crit rate, whatever they want on it to really just whittle down that damage. Is that the way you see it being played out? Oh, absolutely. This is going to be devastating for their carries here. They're not going to have those four-piece bonuses either, so they might have to draft a little bit differently to make sure they have multiple damage dealers here to combat that debuff. Okay, here is our first carry for Team 2 here. They are going with Imbibitor Lune, an excellent pick for side 2 here, and absolutely going to be someone who's going to be able to carry one of those sides. But without a chest piece, we might be in trouble, Vulcan. Yeah, Tiv and he is going to be the one they choose to take the chest piece off straight away. I mean, let's Let's face it, the swarm was built to sell this man and he is a master of destroying the swarm so it's a very very safe pick there uh, they'd be pretty happy to go ahead and pick that up but obviously they do have those debuffs to be wary of yep okay and team one is going to pick up their very next carries here in topaz and jing lu a double pick here Jing Lu, very, very high potential with Blade, and Topaz has some decent synergy with Kafka as well, depending on how they want to build these teams, Vulcan. 100% good to see the two new characters coming out. Jing Liu, I know Tectone did pull her, so these guys, once again, with their limited roster, are going to have to use whatever they do have, so we can see that playing out, and I'm definitely keen to see some Topaz action in here, because obviously I'm a massive fan of the Topaz and Numbi, and yeah, waiting to see what they can make of it. Okay, Team 2 are not messing around either. They're picking up their next carry here in Sele. A very interesting pick here, as I would have thought that Imbibitor and Sele both want to go side 2 here, Vulcan. So which one do you think is going to go side 1? I think you'd have to go with the Zilla. Just She can brute force things. I think you just leave Dan Hung where he's going to excel, uh, and then just leave Zilla on the first side and, and see what she can do. But nonetheless, you know, she has fallen off of the, the radar as such in recent times in being one of the most overpowered units, but she is still an absolutely fantastic unit and we can expect some pretty strong things out of her. Okay, and Himiko is going to be their next pick here. So they're looking to build out some double damage compositions. Himiko is spectacular in this memory of Kios for side one. So very interested to see what her performance is going to be. Yeah, definitely. Kind of just like the better version of Hook. So kind of makes me wonder why they banned Hook and not Himiko. I do prefer Himiko for this, but maybe uh, I just, I'm not experienced enough in the fire users, personally not building either of those yet. And now we have our second debuff. Once again, Tectone and Smack being able to get a debuff on the enemy team as a handicap. And this one is no balls. For this one, at the end of pick and bands, they're going to be able to choose two characters off the enemy team and remove their all. Orbs. Once again, this is a very big hit to any character, but in my assumption, you're looking at the damage dealers, getting rid of that extra elemental damage off of them and making them deal as little damage as possible. And Team 1 is picking up Gwenaifen here, a great support for any of their carries they've picked so far, but particularly synergistic with Kafka, who they've already got an option for as well, which is looking pretty good, Vulcan. Yeah, I think that has to be for the Kafka synergy. It just makes sense. Uh, those two together, just a great option and keen to see it play out. I'm loving seeing the new characters getting a run. Absolutely. Okay, another dot user is going to be picked next up here in Luka. So I'm imagining this is going to be a Kafka, Gwenaifen, Luka team, or do you think they'll push that Gwenaifen to being a more supportive role? Well, I think we'll have to wait and see. Because they do have those extra two slots, they, they're coming in with 10 characters and they only have to choose the eight of them. So maybe they're just broadening their options to decide later on uh, and decide what they actually want to do with it. Yep, okay, and Team 2 are going to pick up their sustains here in Luocha and Japard. Luocha, of course, a powerhouse and fantastic on side 2, and Japard is a nice defensive staple as well. Don't you think, Vulcan? 100%. Enemy team's got Fushwen as a solo sustain. Honestly, the solo sustain's coming in pretty late in this one, uh, with Luocha and Japard both getting picked up, but now their, team, uh, their teams are definitely set uh, for that phase to go ahead and basically just 
have full sustain and focus in on that damage that they can deal. And here we go. We've got the third debuff, which is a change of heart. Now, for this one, this one is an interesting one. It allows team one of Smack and Tectone to choose a character and then swap that character with one of the enemy team's characters, which is honestly, it is a massively crippling debuff to anyone. And they've gone ahead and picked the Fire Trailblazer and traded it with the enemy team's Ting Yun. Now that is a slap in the face if I've ever seen one. What do you think? That is absolutely brutal. Taking away the best support on Team 2 and replacing it with a purely defensive option right after Team 2 just picked their sustains. It's a big swing here. Oh boy, I can't wait to see this play out. And the next pick of Team 1 right after that huge power play is going to be Welt. And that means that Team 1 is going to be running Sustain Welt here unless there's a hidden healer I can't see on Team 1 here, Vulcan. 100%, unless they're planning just to do a Blade solo or something like that, Welt is going to be their stall Sustain. And there's going to be one side on this team that, I, I don't know, they're going to be playing it pretty hairy. But now that they do have that extra support of Ting Yun, maybe they run a Hyper Carry Ting Yun and Bronya together uh, to be able to try and not need even the Sustain. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Yep, okay, and Team 2 gonna pick up their final unit here in Yukong. Picking up the last support here on offer. Interestingly, not going for another double damage option here to try and mitigate all those debuffs, but it could pay off in the long run. Yeah, I think that was more of a desperation call after they lost their Ting Yun to that change of heart, so they just had to pick up whatever they had left. Okay, so here we are post pick and ban stage, and this is where the debuffs get applied. But before we do that, the team of Gwoba and Pokey do get one small buff for themselves for all the handicap that they have taken. And that is the last hope. They get to choose one unselected character and pick them up on their roster. So they will have a total of nine units to choose from. And that unit is gonna be immune to any of the debuffs chosen by Smack and Tectone. And they have picked Sampo of all characters. So they have got a Sampo in their roster as well. Now comes the time to apply those debuffs and Tectona Spac have pretty understandably chosen Zilla and Dan Hung to remove both of their chest pieces and their orb. So Dan Hung, Imbibital Lune, and Zilla both absolutely crippled for their damage dealing potential in these runs. Okay, kicking us off for the runs is Gotcha Smack with Team 1, Side 1. He's running the team of Tingyun, Gwenaifen, Topaz, and Welt. No healer in here, and surprisingly, no blade who they had on reserve. And knowing Tectone, I don't think he has a blade either, so I think Blade has been permanently benched from their teams. What do you think we're going to see here, Grimro? Well, I think that does make sense because I see that Jing Lu will likely be on the other side and I have to imagine Bronya is accompanying at her and Blade doesn't really play the nicest with Ting Yun here. So it definitely makes sense to put Ting Yun with someone like Topaz or Gwenaifen, but I'm more interested in this solo sustain wealth focus. A hundred percent. This is going to be an interesting run, and I think we're going to have some low health bars here. If that monkey gets a hit off, we're going to be seeing some danger, so let's get it started. So obviously starting there off with the Ting Yun ult straight away so that she's going to get her energy when she starts her turn. Moving into the Gwenaif and obviously going to try and get some break in here as well. We really want to keep that monkey broken and delayed as much as possible because he's going to chunk people way too hard if he does get a hit. Yep, main priority here is going to be getting that wealth ultimate as much as possible here. So trying to conserve skill points on everybody else so you can be spamming the skill on wealth is going to be the name of the game here. And also trying to maximize damage so they can secure the win as well. So we are going to be stacking up a ton of fire kiss here on the enemies with what I think getting that massive damage amplification here. But it looks like that monkey is going to be targeting that Opaz here. That was a great interrupt on the monkey. He waited for the monkey to take his first turn. Then he was about to pounce, but he used the Welt ult to interrupt him. 
canceling that turn. It was a perfect play. The other great thing is with the Topaz on the team, we do have some great break potential with the Numbi. So the, the lockout potential on this monkey is really strong due to the Welt and the really well-timed ultimate and then also getting the breaks here. But unfortunately, he's going to prematurely break, um, which won't, we won't allow him to do some fancy ult plays there. But in general, he should be pretty safe and the monkey yeah, goes down easy. That, that was is actually very, very impressive, Vulcan. That is very impressive to get that down there. So it looks like the triple offensive composition here, bringing wealth instead of a pure sustain, is really paying off for Gacha Smack here. And if he can get that interrupt, as you mentioned again, on that monkey, I think I think he might be in with a real shot here, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. So he's got already imprisoned with the monkey. That's the great thing about the wealth technique. But waiting to see, just trying to make a decision here because he has got plays. Does he use the skill? He's only got the one skill point or does he want to play conservative? He uses it on the Topaz. Okay, going in for some damage with that Topaz and Ting Yun being targeted. Keen to see if we can get some energy up on that Weld. Yes, maybe maybe we're going to see a Ting Yun ultimate here on that Weld to ensure that no damage comes in here, but that will cost him some damage as well. Going to opt to try and break that right hand monster here instead of the monkey. Maybe he's got a plan for this monkey Vulcan. Do you think he's going to go for that ultimate on the monkey here? May do. I think there he just wanted to change the proof of debt target. I don't know why he left that monkey alone. Okay, Topaz tanking it. Not too bad. He does have the extra little bit of break with the basic attacks from Ting Yun here. She's going to get to her ultimate next. Keen to see if he does buff the Welt to go ahead and imprison the enemies. That's the decision he's trying to think of right now, I think. Where, which, which line does he go on with his ult? He is just holding onto it. He has some time to think. He didn't have to rush it. And that's what he's going to have to decide here. Well, he will have the ultimate available here, and I believe this enemy, the next action they'll be taking is not going to be an offensive one in nature. So, well, we'll be safe here. It's just going to be a matter of what we're going to have to do next here. So, we have Topaz and Gwynaifin's turns coming up here, and we have Welt's ultimate as well as Tinyun's ultimate here. What are we thinking in terms of playing here? We can get a break on this wizard here, Vulcan. Yes, he's going to get the break, and then he's probably going to do the same play with the Welt and interrupt the monkey in between turns. He's going straight for the ult on the Topaz, so we're focusing in on that Topaz damage and playing completely to that. We get the break, as expected. Honestly, th there is a lot of damage coming out here on this side uh, with, <laughs> with that enemy, so that one's just about dealt with. He is going to interrupt with the Welt. There you go, pressing the Welt, getting the interrupt, imprisoning. Just needs to land it. Obviously, he's going to be stacked on his effect hit rate for this purpose, and 71k coming out of the Numbi lovely hit almost not having to worry about that unit anymore absolutely and that ape has literally been able to do pretty much nothing this entire fight they're being knocked all the way down the turn order here and it looks like they're going to be able to take out that wizard enemy so as long as gotcha smart here manages who is getting focused by that enemy here i think that he's going to be well and truly in the clear here he just has to make sure he's not using any incorrect skills here like topaz's skill here okay goes for that basic a very good play there vulgar yeah this basic was safe because it's going to change the proof of debt target so he doesn't have to use this waste of skill to change it keeps her away from the targeting because we need to keep that targeting on the Gwenaifen or the Topaz at the moment otherwise we are going to lose a unit and it looks like he's going to let the Gwenaifen take the hit yep okay oh just <laughs> barely survives there so it looks like he's got one more of these monkey hits to get through before he's going to be out of breath but that monkey hit could take out any one of his team members here he really wants that to be landing on Ting Yun though don't you think Falcon? he might actually get the break here with Numbi if Ting Yun does a basic on the, oh it won't be enough though will it it won't be enough no. to boost the Numbi so he is just gonna have to take it with the Ting Yun it's the only play here spread that damage well I mean that's that's gonna be how it has to go hopefully Ting Yun doesn't go down here it's gonna be close though oh, oh, oh my oh. goodness that is very close. He's going to get that ultimate, though. So it looks like with that Dance 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 Light Tone equipped, he's going to have a bunch more actions here and hopefully is going to get this in two cycles, Vulcan. A hundred... That, that was some nice Gwenaif and damage and that is going to be game over right there. Numbi's going to come in and clean it up. Two cycles. Really, really respectable run. Okay, so here we are with Team 2, a side one. We got Mr. Pokey coming at it with the Fire MC that he was so graciously gifted by the enemy team. He's got that Himiko, the Sampo that they picked as their last choice and also the Pella. So once once again, we are, have got a Fire MC as the solo sustain unit in this one. Very interesting, te interesting team. What do you think about this one? 
Well, I am a little bit worried to only see five main character here as the sustain, but depending on the light turn option, it actually can be an exceptionally strong choice here, especially using that skill to taunt up and also to get that ape onto five main character here. I think it's going to be a matter of damage though, because just Himiko and Sampo without any acceleration harmony units, ooh, it might be tough to beat Duchess Mark's two cycle time here, Vulcan. 100%, so let's jump in. Obviously, we get the breaks straight away. Himiko coming in with the follow-up, doing a ton of damage. Pella going in, getting her ultimate ready already, popping it and getting those death shreds. Obviously, just speed is going to be a thing, wanting to kill stuff so that it doesn't kill you. But like you mentioned, we do have the taunt there as an option to help the Fire MC protect the rest of the team. Ooh, going for a skill here with Himiko, so she is going to be the target. Oh, gets a break though. So definitely juggling the aggro here on this ape, but he's going to have to make a tough choice here. Is it going to be Pella or is it going to be Himiko who is getting targeted by that ape? How do you see him hanging on and managing damage with all of this aggro from this ape here? Well, I think he would have planned this out and maybe, I mean, his, his Pell is decently tanky, only dropping to about 40%, which is definitely handy. But looking at the damage he's already dealing, I expect it not to do too much, but we have already passed through one cycle. So we're, we're one cycle down already. The Ape's getting another turn, but this one is going to go onto the Fire MC. So that isn't too bad for damage. He's going to be fine moving into the second wave of this, but obviously one cycle down already. Yes, yeah, so we did see him use a basic attack there on Himiko, just not wanting her to take any damage there from that ape and that targeting, putting it on Fireman character instead. But he does have some time here to play with. The question is, is he going to be able to get this ape down before the cycle ends here? Hopefully a big Sampo break. Oh, no. Okay, break on the Fireman character. Okay, 25k 25k break. break. Not good. bad. Not bad. So that was his play there, trying to get the Fire MC to break. I didn't know whether the Sampo was going to be the break build or the Fire MC, but it ended up being the Fire MC with the 16k dot. Not too bad. Drops the enemy. Here we go. Into the next one. Yep, okay, we have a Pella ultimate available here, but the enemies are moving right after Pella, so it's going to be a tough choice. Does he want to use it now, or does he want to save it up and hopefully preserve some extra turns on that defense shred here? Definitely, oh, going for the basic attack there, going to be saving up that ultimate, wasting a bit of energy, but getting a bit of extra duration there, Morgan. 100%, now it comes out. Lucky with that first turn of the monkey, he doesn't actually hit, otherwise that would be savage. Going for those random breaks as well. Got a fairly even split with the Sampo on the breaks. Going for the taunt, just keeping everything on on the fire mc because if you lose any of the other characters we are done especially with the risk of the pally you can't afford to lose her when she's at half health right now because she's the only amplification we have but does opt for the stealer on Himiko, so she is going to be taking a big monkey fist here in a second, which is going to be a bit spooky here, but does have the damage reduction from It Fire. will give her that energy still. as well. It will give her that energy. No, the taunt comes in because he had the taunt active. The fire mc took it and it was going to give that energy, but we don't even have to worry about it. Big brain players. I've actually never seen that interaction before. That is crazy that the taunt overrides the targeting of the ape there. That is some big brain plays there from Mr. Pokey showing his game knowledge there, which is really spectacular. That five man character is super paying off here. Obviously with high break effect as well, he's going to be trying to break, I'd imagine, with the Fire MC as much as possible. 38k on the attack with the break, following up with the Himiko 36k. Looking set up, we do have the Sampo and Himiko ults available to us. Sampo going to get hit here, or is the taunt active? No, the Sampo does take the hit, but we have those two ults ready to go, and Himiko is going to get a break if she uses that ult, and she will have the follow-up coming. I think he's probably holding off here to try and get the fireman character break or maybe the Sampo break here and getting a little bit more damage and trying to really get this done in as few cycles as possible. Because remember, we are in two cycle territory right now and they're only at half health here. So he will be really facing a really steep clock here to try and give Guobo as much time as possible on side two. 100%. So here we have the double break coming in. He's deciding whether he taunts to avoid that damage on the Himiko. Does go for the break. It will delay the monkey a bit, but not enough. Got the Sampo coming in now to help amplify that dot damage from the break from the Fire MC. Honestly, he is playing this really well, in my opinion. Just playing it incredibly smooth. Don't know what he was waiting for on the ult. There's only one option. We don't have an ult cancelling button yet, unfortunately. So he had to go for that one anyway. Yes, maybe thinking if he wants to use that Himiko ultimate before the hit comes in for a bit of extra energy, but opting to hold on to it here, not interested in getting the extra energy from being hit, but is going to look for a more opportune time to get that in there. Perhaps going for a break on that wizard there on the right. But Pella does have her ultimate here. How do you think he's going to use this? 
He might be waiting for the enemy's turn to end, but at this point, I don't know, would, would you just be popping the pellet ult? Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. We don't have much time to worry about. I don't think an extra turn is going to make a difference. I feel like that thing is going to be dead with inside the next turn. Yes, unable to get the break there with a five main character, but Himiko is still going to put out some pretty big work there with her big break and ultimate combo there. And they're getting very, very low here. So it does look like he's going to be able to clean it up this cycle as long as everything goes to plan and no one gets taken out here for this. Yeah, well, the monkey doesn't have targeting active at the moment, so he's pretty safe there. Should have the damage. We've got those dots on, and as soon as they take their turns, I'd say they're both pretty well done. So honestly, really respectable run considering the team that we ended up with doing that in three cycles i'm quite impressed okay here we are with team one side two tech tone jumping into it with the team of fushwen bronya jingliu which is an absolutely solid core and then we have the kafka thrown in there uh tech tone self-proclaim worst rng on gear of any player in the game so you know i'm curious to see what he's doing but maybe it's just because he's kafka is one of his best built characters and we are limited on that roster uh due to what they have picked what do you think's going on here grimo well, absolutely, as you mentioned, we've got an insanely solid core here of Fushuan, Baronya, and Jing Lu. And that Kafka, you know, I'm interested to see what she can bring to the table, but at the very least, she's gonna be there to generate some skill points for the rest of the team. A hundred percent. So we get we come in. Survival shouldn't be too much of an issue. We do have the Fushuan. Obviously, at the start, thanks to Jing Lu, everything is frozen. Uh, so we should be pretty good there. Getting a nice 71k out of the Jing Lu straight off the bat. We do have the ult available after Bronya uses her skill. So things looking pretty solid at the start here. Yep, we're getting a huge boosted combo here from Bronya Jing Lu. We're going to see some big numbers. There it is, 128k. Beautiful. With the bad RNG relics here, I'm certainly seeing some very satisfying crits here from Tech Turn. And as you mentioned, and as we guessed, that Kafka is going to be a more supportive role here, using her basic attack, fueling the team, and bringing everything she can to the table. 100% using that basic attack, but still getting her dots on, popping them, using her ultimate. Uh, still going to have some form of damage contribution, but not as significant as having another support or something in the team. Yes, looks like Tectone is trying to navigate a zero cycle here, but he is about to fall out of the transcendent state. There's nothing he can do about that, unfortunately, and he doesn't have the ultimate available to get back in there quick smart. So it is going to be looking like he's not going to achieve that zero cycle here, but still on pace for a pretty good clear time here. I and think, deciding what he wants to do with this Kafka. I think he's considering whether his Kafka with her skill can pop and kill one of these units. Ends up going with the basic attack to play it safe because if Kafka could have popped the unit and killed it with the skill, it would have meant that the Jing Liu could have then killed the other one with her non-transcendent skill and got through it. But I guess he decided that his ultimate wasn't going to have, uh, sorry, his skill wasn't going to have the damage with the Kafka. Yep, okay, yeah, I actually can definitely see that angle there. Maybe he could have gone for a bit of a risky play there, but instead playing it safe is going to have a full cycle here to build up energy and go for skill points as he sees fit here, or just move straight into side two here if he so desires. Okay, so he's moving in with one one tick of Transcendent State left, but he does have that ultimate, giving him two ticks to use with the Jing Liu. Uh, going to have to use the ultimate at the start here, unfortunately not buffed by the Bronya, but that's still okay. Getting that extra damage in gets yep, the extra absolutely. stack. He does get some pretty good damage in here, getting that true sting down as fast as possible. He will get one Bronya boosted transcendent state attack here, which isn't bad. And he will be able to fully line back up here and reset his energy to hopefully get another big burst window here coming up and take this boss down. 100% now. We, we do have the summons starting to come. Now, the summons are interesting because they do add a bit of a threat with damage. However, you can kill them and get those explosions, which can assist in damage as well if you have enough cleave. So there we go. We've got one stack now, one more with the, the Jing Liu, and we will be back into that transcendent stage. She just does have that little bit of a lull phase. That's her one downfall is that you do need to get her back into that transcendence phase to get the damage ramped up again. Yes, absolutely. That Kafka is still generating some good skill points for us, as well as keeping her shock active on the boss as well. And we are seeing that he does have a few skill points left over here, so he can situationally weave in a very powerful Kafka skill if he wants as well. But getting a big combo off here nonetheless, with that Bronya, with that Jing Lu here, taking that boss down and blowing up all the adds, which is going to get a lot of vulnerability stacks on there. And pretty much guarantee this boss will be going down in the next cycle here and moving him on to the second. 
life bar. Yep, so we're, we're into two cycles now. We've used two cycles, so we're on to our third. Just deciding what he does, 14%, pretty safely that we should get this boss down. And left at 1%. This is a very awkward situation. Do you lose the timing on the Bronya Jing Liu? And he does. That is just a no good situation. That is so unlucky, Vulcan. I cannot believe he got left on 1% there. That throws everything completely out of sync for Tech Toad here. It is so unfortunate. His Bronya is now going to be desynced from his Jing Lu, which is just unlucky here. That, oh, man. That 1%. And honestly, in his first wave of that fight, he could have had better RNG as well. He just, it feels like he's just missed out by a few percent a couple times now, which has really cost him. Uh, besides that, the run could have been very different but now he has gone through three cycles like you said Jing Liu and Bronya desynced and you just have to boost that Jing Liu to get them back in sync otherwise you're never going to find that synergy again does kill the beetles to get them to pop which is going to add that extra damage which isn't too bad either it coming in and now we are starting to get low with that Kafka taking some damage and no stacks left on the Fu Shuen. Yes, my goodness, that Kafka is getting very low here, still opting to go with that basic attack there, trying to get as many skill points as possible, maybe going for a skill spam push one angle here to try and ensure that no one dies. That Kafka is getting very low, Vulcan! The, the Kafka is, but if there was one character you could choose to sacrifice in this team, it would definitely be that Kafka. Not as important as the other core members, and we just really need this Jing Liu and Bronya to survive, and we should be pretty safe, because as long as they can deal that damage, we do have two stacks of transcendence, we don't have the ult left, but we do have two stacks. And as you can see, that one stack doing massive damage. So we should be pretty fine as long as we can get through that. And if we can pop these beetles, they will start the snowball and we should get damage into the boss. Maybe even clutch the kill. So does he try a Kafka skill into ultimate here to pop those beetles to see if that's going to be enough? No, he plays it conservative and he does just go with that basic attack to play it for the Jing Liu. Eating up another cycle. So we are four cycles in now. We're on to our fifth, but this is pretty much said and done because there we go the beetles are going to pop going to pop not going to be enough it's going to be just short on actually killing the boss but now we are pretty safe and that is going to be a, a done run with the fush when sitting there at 234 hp four cycles there with jing Liu bringing it home for us a pretty decent run Okay, here we are. Team 2, side 2. We've got Guobal with the team of Locha, Imbibita Lune, Fire MC, and Yukong. Now, that Fire MC you may have seen in Mr. Pokies as well, but due to that change of heart, they both have access to this character, and that is why we have it. What do you think of this, this team coming up? Well, my first reaction is that Sele has been left on the bench, so she is not going to be involved with this, and she was one of the targets for all those debuffs there, so smart to leave her out, but we are bringing in Bibida without a chest piece and without an orb Vulcan. This is going to be pretty insane to see what kind of damage this Bibida can put out. I mean, maybe this is going to make him balanced compared to the rest of the units in the game at the moment, so <laughs> let's see how it goes. Well, I would hold your horses because I'm pretty sure this is an E2 in Bibidol Lune, so uh, we'll see exactly what's going on here, but it's going to be a pretty interesting time to beat. Four cycles is actually on the faster side for side two here, considering there is those two life bars to move through, and don't forget that Pokey was a little slower than Gacha Smack on side one here, so it should be down to the wire here, Vulcan. Let's see. So we do have the Yukong ult. I'm keen to see this in both of the damage, man. I just want to see it. No chest piece, no orb. What can this guy throw out? Still throwing out a solid 148k. What is this guy built on? I don't even know. Oh my god. Into 111. Well, and there is the E2. It is indeed E2. So taking out those horses here. But it is unfortunately looking like it's not going to be a zero cycle here. So still on pace with Tech Tone here. He's going to have to make up a lot of time here on this bug wave, which is going to be coming up. 100%. I just have one question. What kind of damage does his Dan Hung do when it has a chest piece and an orb on it? That was insane. Obviously buffed by the Yukong, but we're not even using Bronya or anything else in that. That is quite amazing damage. 
It is very impressive here for a double sustained team here. And that is one of the cool things about this team from Goiba. He shouldn't be in any danger at all of dying with those double sustains there. So it really is just how much damage can he get out of this inhibitor without that chest piece and without that orb here. And he almost has that ultimate back up again for another mega combo. He's got his skill points primed, five of them are available here, Vulcan. He's managing this extra cycle. He's been taking excellently. 100%, but he did actually burn through one additional cycle there. So we are two cycles into it. So we're onto our third cycle already, not having the speed to keep up. Yes, definitely a little bit challenging here, but he does have a big combo here going into this Swarm True Sting here. The question is, how is he going to play this? Because he does have that advanced action forward from that ultimate there from E2. Is he going to use it now? Is he going to use it after a basic? How do you think he's going to use it here, Vulcan? I think he's just going to hold it. Not not being an, uh, an E2 Imbibita Lune user, I'm not too sure on the perfect play there, but uh, by the looks of it now, he is just going to follow up the Yukong with the Dan and do as much damage as possible. Yep, looks like he is getting ready here to maybe have to waste a little bit of energy here, but it is going to be the maximum damage combo here. Still hitting for 177k there. Gonna be applying some vulnerabilities there. Straight into the ultimate, and he's gonna have another three skill point basic attack here to do big damage. 100%. Okay, we got a 73k on the ult, which is a little bit under what we were expecting. But now that we've lost the Yukong buff, still, <laughs> we've got to remember that dude is missing a chest piece and an orb and still throwing out those numbers. Very, very respectable. Well, he's not just missing a chest piece and an orb. He's also missing the Ting Yoon he was meant to have on his team, Vulcan. He's now going to fire a character instead. Yeah, that is a little bit crippling to say the least. There we go. Getting some damage. We are three cycles down into our fourth cycle. I doubt we're going to be able to get it in this one. So we'll have to see how much he can push out this damage with that double sustain. And as you mentioned, you nailed it. Losing that Ting Yun has been a massive, massive crippling to this team. Yes, definitely. And also, it looks like this is an attack boot build here of the inhibitor from what I can see here. So it is definitely a little bit challenging to kind of manage those actions here. It's really, really, the cycles are ticking away here. Only getting one inhibitor move per cycle uh, is definitely hurting him here, I think. Yeah, I, I guess he took took the uh, the boot, the attack boots, to try and make up for some of that damage loss in the uh, in the chest and orb. Yes, definitely. But he is going to get the first life bar down here and is making a pretty good show of it as well. Stuck at 1% as well. How do we get two battles with both getting the boss stuck at 1%? Luckily for him, though, it doesn't actually cripple him. It just gives him more options to play around and generate skill points. But he does go ahead and drop it with the fire MC. Yes, definitely hanging on to that Luocha ultimate here, though, for quite some time here. Maybe he's waiting for this exact moment here. Yes, he is. He's going for that break potential here on those bugs, trying to manage those debuffs and ensure that he's not getting any nasty wind shears or disorients on him. Yeah, he's, like, obviously, we don't have to worry about sustain. He can hold on to whatever he wants uh, for the damage. And we're just looking at trying to get that next Imbibital uh, Lune off. And we're going to get the Yukong double up. Follow it up with the Imbibital Lune. Get some big damage out of this next one. We do have the four skill points. We've got the two stacks. He's pretty much good to go, except he is a little bit low on that energy with the Imbibitor, so he is not going to get that ult combo yet. No, he would have to get quite a few kills here, but thanks to the Memory Turbulence, he might actually just wipe out the entire field of bugs here. Maybe. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> he does. Good. Does All he right, get it? Okay. Doesn't no, get the energy, doesn't energy. get the energy he needs. No, okay, but he does have that Yukon ultimate. He's still holding on to it here. So I guess he's going for one final big combo with what he hopes to be. Going to be finishing off this boss coming up here on the next Imbibitor action. And unfortunately, it's happening just after the end of the cycle. Imbibitor was a little bit faster. Could have got it close to done, but still, we do need a bit more damage. We actually need two more turns out of him to get the damage required, unless he can do it with the three, the three attack combo. Well, I think he's in with a shot here. We have to see. Okay, that was a big hit here. Taking out a lot of that life. Okay, yes, it's definitely going to be enough here, Vulcan. He is going to smash through that bug there and take it down. Definitely when he uses that combo, it is crisp.
Wow, what a fantastic showing and well done to everyone involved. So the final result is going to be Gacha Smack, two cycles, Tecton, four cycles against Poké's three cycles and Guoba's six cycles. So it's a six versus nine, 69. <laughs> Very nice. And congratulations to the winners, Smack and Tecton on beating Poké and Guoba. Granted, of course, Poké and Guoba's units, I mean, some of them, they don't even have clothes and no balls at that. So well, well done by everyone. And of course, I still can't believe how much damage they were able to output missing those two pieces of gear. So, wow, definitely, definitely amazing to see. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Tamias Cup because we tried something different this time. Uh, added the, the buffs as well as the debuffs to make it a bit more entertaining uh, because we understand not everyone has the same account in terms of balance. And we don't have an account that everyone can use uh, that has the same amount of uh, stats on their units as well as gear. So, hopefully, this provided more entertainment value. You. and let me know your thoughts there was definitely going to be a future Tomize cup for version 1.5 so the fifth one and let me know your thoughts and what we you would add or change and i'll see you guys then all right take care